Well, Thanksgiving now under a week away, and this is going to be a Thanksgiving like none other. So joining us now to answer your questions in case you're still trying to figure out what's the best and safest way to balance safety with family. We've got Dr. David Bannock from Yukon Health uh, joining us once again. Doctor, thank you for taking the time to join us. And uh, please, why don't you give us what? Whatever recommendations you can. We know the CDC has recommended against traveling this Thanksgiving. What do you think people can do to just uh, minimize their risks within reason? So I, mean, I think with uh, COVID uh, rates rising in Connecticut, but also throughout the entire country, you know, I think travel is something that we should really try to avoid. Um, you know, I think um, you know some folks are already committed to traveling, already um, in the process of doing so. So I think you know, with that in mind, um, there are certain measures we can still take place. Uh, we can be thinking about uh, the size of our gatherings, trying to minimize those as much as possible, particularly with people outside of our house. Uh, whenever possible, go outdoors. Um, if you're going to be indoors, um, if you need to be because of weather, um, you know, the masking can still be very helpful. Um, you know, I know it's yeah. difficult when we're eating and maybe when um, you're getting together and eating, um, trying to spread out as much as possible. Uh, but, you know, the masking, um, the distancing and the small gatherings still very much um, in play. And, you know, of course, the careful hand washing is a part of that as well. Yeah. So, I mean, the, it's a balance. You know, we're all we're all, um, you know, feeling some fatigue, feeling some loneliness. Um, and there may be that push to get together. But, um, you know, there's still those measures that we can take place to keep everyone safe. Well, some people say, hey, I, why don't I just go get a test two or three days beforehand? And if it comes back negative, I'll be good to go. And boy, these are very accurate tests. In fact, sometimes they're coming back with positive results, even for people who aren't infectious. It seems like that's a good plan. What do you think? I think testing can be part of it. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, frequent testing is something we would encourage if you're going to be um, meeting with people outside of your household, um, getting tested beforehand, getting tested afterwards. It's important to remember that, you know, the test is only a single point in time. So someone could test negative um, and then unfortunately become infected the next day um, and then be contagious to others. So um, if you have the opportunity, I would encourage it, um, you know, get a test before, get a test afterwards. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly if you're going to be traveling, um, uh, that, that should be part of the picture as well. And uh, you mentioned getting a test. We're taking a live look right now at Rentschler Field, and we're seeing reports of really long lines for people to get them. And I understand that's a big focus. But I do want to ask you about the length of time it takes to get results. 24 hours is good, but with more demand could come longer delays. And at some point, I imagine the test is just not going to be worth it depending on how long it takes to get the results. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I'm, again, I know it's kind of like a sliding scale of utility mm -hmm. here. Yeah, it's tricky. I, I, th I think it's, um, you know, certainly earlier is better. The sooner you can get the results, uh, the better help you know um, whether or not you're positive and the measures to take. Uh, you know, even if it's a slightly delayed result, I still think there's benefit there. You know, I think um, knowing um, whether or not you're positive or not and using that decision to guide your decisions about um, isolation, um, how long you need to isolate for, and also for doing the contact tracing and quarantine any of your close contacts. There's still that role there. Ideally, the test turnaround time is quick, but I think, um, you know, even if it is a bit delayed, Delayed, it's there's still there's still value there, um, both for as an individual basis, but also in the public health uh, context. And I'll also point out that you know in the in the coming weeks we're seeing new treatments um, for outpatients who test positive in certain high risk groups. So you know and, and I think um, you know those will, those will be kind of increasingly uh, available in the coming weeks. So I, I still think there's value. Um, hospitals are working as hard as they can. Uh, the state is supporting testing centers to try to get those results and that turnaround time as quick as possible. But um, you know even even still I, I still think there's value there. Great. Dr. Bannock has taken the time multiple times to join us here on the morning news to give us his expertise. So uh, we always appreciate you taking the time to join us again. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.